Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and tonight's the night. My name is We Need to Talk About Kurt Travis Snell, and I'm joined by... Not Jim Limsey. <laughs> Not Jim Limsey. <laughs> Not Jim Lindsay, Kirkland Fats. <laughs> I'm the pay it forward Taylor Field. Oh, I can't wait to hear from him tonight. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, this is a good episode we have here. If you don't know, we've been reviewing every single episode of Dexter New Blood. This is obviously episode five. Oh, what the hell was the title? I always The Runaway. The Runaway. I did see it this time. I saw that one. So we're going to talk about The Runaway. You can go back for the weeks before to check out episodes one to four. The retrospectives I reviewed every single season, which uh, definitely feels uh, paying off right now. I had a good memory, but now we're, we're getting to some really good stuff right now. So Taylor Field, where can they find all these episodes and more? Ladies and gentlemen, you can find us with your internet connection in the search bar. Geekverse Podcast is our home base. Geekverse, well, I should say Geekverse.ca is our home base. Geekverse Podcast is our Facebook. Geekverse Cast is our Twitter. And our Patreon, you can find Geekverse Podcast stuff. Yes, you can. Patreon. Get ad-free exclusive early episodes. Uh, you can get uh, tons of retros early. You can get stuff, little updates uh, after nine when we do it. So lots of good things there. We review Hawkeye, Dexter, Weekly. Used to be Chucky, too. Just did the finale, so go check that out. Uh, we have do two newscasts every week. We got Spider-Man coming up. We got Matrix coming up. We got Matrix Retrospective coming up. Lots of good things. So go over to Patreon. Support us. The more you support us, the more content we can create and get the time. And uh, we very much appreciate that. And I think that's everything. Just go down links below. Go subscribe, like, rate, rate review, wherever you choose. Whatever platform you listen to, video service, do that. We'd very much appreciate it. So a big thank you to that. And then check out our Manscaped code down below, GVPod, 20%. Free worldwide shipping. Good stuff. Taylor Field, what did you think of episode five? We're officially halfway through the season now. We have five more episodes. What did you think of episode five? Non-spoilers, and then we'll take our little break and we'll get into spoilers. I thought it was great. It had, I, I'm a huge sucker for Easter eggs and in these kind of types of shows that, you know, just pop a whole bunch of them onto the screen. Like it's just it's a good time, and I feel like this was going off the deep end a little bit in that aspect, and we finally got a whole bunch of stuff that's just feeding into the story. And of all the cliffhangers that we've had so far, this is the episode with like this is the big, the big, big one. Mm-hmm. So I, I'm I'm super high off this episode. I'm super stoked, and I I'm eagerly awaiting next week now. Yeah, and I'm happy that the I I, I found a way for us to watch it earlier. You know, all me, uh, <laughs> Kirk and the Pats or Mr. Jim Limsey. Uh, what did you think? Not of? Jim Limsey. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I uh, Kurt, not Kurt. <laughs> <laughs> I could go by many not yeah. names the or man of many names. <laughs> the man of many unnames uh but yeah no for this episode i really really liked it there's some shocking surprises in it there was a couple moments that were really just uh like anxiety ridden (laughs) it's just like how intense some of the the moments got which i loved um i wouldn't say it's my favorite episode so far i think just the last two were I'd probably put over these ones, even though there was a couple moments that we'll talk about in the spoiler section that like really was, whoa, here we go. <laughs> here we go. Dexter's back. So that was just really exciting. And uh, no, yeah, it's it's awesome. I'm. How many total is in this one? Eight? I probably ask this question Ten. every fucking episode. Yeah, I think okay, you do, yeah. actually. So we got five more. We got five more. Okay, five more. Halfway mark. Um, yeah, it's just ramping up and it's just really, really exciting. So uh yeah no i I think that's all i really got to say spoiler free wise it's just keep watching it if you're if you haven't seen this episode yet and you're you're gonna butt out on our spoiler Mm -hmm. section i would say watch this and keep watching the show because it's great yeah i think uh, even at the beginning of this episode i said that we're halfway through the season but kirkland always never fails that no i had the echo remember it was it wasn't working at the time (laughs) that was when i switched my mic (laughs) um yeah no this is that's an interesting debate like which episode i like more because it's definitely episode one and then this it goes back and forth because i just love episode one it's like a perfect almost like little movie very much like the first extra pilot i just love that world getting back into it how we meet jim Lindsay and things like that But this episode, this is the, like, there's like a, you could have took in these oh shit moments and kind of spread them throughout the season, but they really, especially some of the stuff I was not expecting for episode five. I thought, oh, we got, you know, we still got five episodes. That's five hours. You know, we got tons of time to get to some of these things. And, uh, 
it, it's like we talked about last week how there were so many plot lines forming and oh how they're gonna handle all these and do all these and everything like that but i had faith in them now it's like okay we're closing a lot of doors and opening a lot of ones very quickly and now the the way that they did one thing I was like okay brilliant i really like that so yeah this has lots of fan service um one moment in particular i literally stood up in my seat because it's just something i've been asking pants for pants down pants down like loki no it's winter now come on now it's manscape but it's still winter but um it's just something i've been asking for since the show started and just like in, like just very intrigued like ah would they go down this route and uh we still have lots of questions that's the thing like there's some big old shit moments but the the table is set for a very exciting five episodes i think these next five episodes man like i think we had a couple in here that were like oh like episode two was like a you know some meet q with harris and we kind of talked about episode three even though it was kirkland's favorite like that was a big like okay we're closing off the matt stuff and moving on like this feels like this just puts uh it opens a lot of bandages opens a lot of old wounds and uh some that you can't you can't go back from. So uh, before we get into spoilers, I don't want to say anything more. So, yeah, I really much enjoy this episode. Might be my favorite, but if not, number two. So uh, we're going to take our first ad break, and then we're going to get right into spoilers. So if you've not seen this episode, definitely, especially because this review will be a little earlier than usual, go watch it and then come right back, and you'll hear these spoilers after the ad break. And we're back. So we got it. We got to talk about the most obvious one. There's lots of big things to talk about. What uh, I feel like we need to talk about Kurt because this is something that me and Kirkland have been talking about and since. Oh, yeah, he muted his mic. He's gonna leave. He's not even gonna address it. But no, we have been talking about this <laughs> since episode one because we saw a guy in a toque with a face mask, like had eye holes and had some older looking eyebrows, and it was like, oh, that's Clancy Brown or whenever we saw him, right? It was like, oh, that's the main bad guy. But Taylor, for four weeks in a row, has been defending him. Now, there's this great moment where already there's all... And we're going to talk about this stuff, about the girl being in the room and everything like that. But there's this great moment where I'm like, oh, Taylor can still make a case, you know, everything. But then this two individual shoots her <laughs> and right after he shoots her he takes off his mask and it's fucking kurt and i was like thank you show for not having to give me another week of taylor being like oh I, that might not be kurt that might be like a friend of his taking advantage of the situation so taylor he's your defendant i feel like there's you're dead to rights now kurt is uh he's our big bad so i'm i'm taking the stand here oh I'm no say, you know he was trying to help her out and okay, she was trying to be inappropriate on camera, and then when he he's locked like, her in the room. He wouldn't let her leave. Get out of there, like leave. And he was letting her go, and he prepared himself because this woman was clearly like not all there, like trying to like seduce this old man who's just mourning over the whole. The whole what if case with his son. And oh, sure is that enough, make it, his son's alive. Sure, remember, sure, his, his son's, son's alive. alive. Yeah, but it was very stressful for for Kurt. So, and now you have the he whole was thing dancing where the night before. she's she's <laughs> out, and she she could have left. He's like, just go, just go, and then she charges no. at him and attacks him, cuts his face up. Oh, the poor old man. So. <laughs> oh, you're combining scenes there, <laughs> defendant. Because he wanted her to run just so she could shoot him. He's taking the. We don't know that. We do know that because, and you said. I swear, quote, I should find it because I guarantee you, Kurt can back me up. You said, until I see him put on or take off that tube, <laughs> I'm not going to believe it's Kurt. That's and true. He took off many the people mer- could wear many face masks in there. It's cold up there. It could have been many other old man. No. So, Kurt is our big bad. The I don't know, the most obvious thing of the season that has been plagued on us. I knew so. it, was a, it was a struggling battle, but uh, I, I definitely... Last week was the done. Last you. week was, I thought, that, you know, this isn't going as well. But no, I, I do feel bad for the girl. Like, she definitely... <laughs> I'll say that she, ha- she, ha- she went out with the upper edge because she totally derailed and made him unstable with how he wants to do his executions <laughs> yeah. and everything. So, she definitely... Like, it's sad, but... I know she wasn't consciously aware that she was undermining it. Like the first couple steps, it seemed like she was aware of that and she wanted to lure him in so she could stab him and get away, which is really smart. But mm-hmm. um, yeah, it just, uh, it sucks that it went out for her like it did, but I'm glad that it made Kurt unstable. Well, I was a little disappointed in her that like, I felt so like she she felt like a very smart character. I liked everything she's doing that because like I I disagreed where she knew exactly like she was thrown off his ritual. I just think that she didn't know why she was locked in there, and she probably thought because she starts to undress. I was not expecting to see titties on a Saturday night on my TV, but there they were just. <laughs> that's out. my cl- yeah, classic saturday night that. yeah that's every saturday night kirkland's place yeah <laughs> anime all over the place ah but like so 
she does that and what then what's that she, scream hold up hold up what was that, that scream it's like no that's for the me. viewers to the side no i didn't say help i went ah that's all that doesn't help I want, on screen screen i want to clarify nothing <laughs> nothing bad is happening at kirkland space it's all good was the anime character saying oh it was it kirkland <laughs> who knows but it wasn't kurt and the thing because he was very mad about her doing these situations which <laughs> I, I liked him getting upset of him just being like no and like this is where i said very trendy like because in season four when things wouldn't go as way it was kind of like he didn't say that verbatim but like no it's spoke like there's a certain formula to how i do this and the second he was in that bar dancing i was like fuck that's his ritual when she's like oh he comes in every month like once in a while and does like okay so this is what he does he finds somebody he dances then he goes watches them for like i guess a weekend and then kills them but so i i love the idea like she's taking off her clothes she's gonna try and get him in because she thinks it's like a sex thing because when he says i don't like that she goes oh what do you want so i don't think she knew in that moment she's throwing him off i think she legitimately thought it was like a sexual assault sort of deal so it's like okay i'm gonna invite him and stab him my problem was she seemed very start but smart but i hate that when he opened the door she just had the glass there ready like i thought she was gonna try to hide it but she just had it ready and just took a swipe at his cheek i was like that's mm-hmm. not first of all should have yeah. hit it a bit more and then second of all you don't go for the cheek you go for the throat i didn't know he's like a tall dude but it's like you go for the genitals you go for even a body blow but like it was so it was strange i thought they were making out to be really smart but then in that moment it's a minor critique but it was like oh okay and then kurt just overpowers her and we go out. yeah well i was expecting more just from her like initially just having like the weapon hidden and it's mm-hmm. like okay something's gonna come of this and it's just like no it's just prolonging her death and then like throws kurt off his gang a little bit i was expecting her to like i don't know hide in the bathroom or something like it's such a a tighter area like if kurt had to go in there he didn't even have his rifle with him like it was so unarmed i don't know could have slashed out his achilles or something i don't know but and he turned the camera off so she has the upper edge to be like yeah exactly she could have been anywhere she could have been naked that probably would have thrown him off too (laughs) 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 this is not how i want it but but yeah it it was interesting and i love that so far we've seen him like the only time he felt a little shaken was when he was talking to angela about finding her son but that was like okay concerned dad when she was not going to run and she was running at him and then he shot her in the face, <laughs> shot her in the chest, he was like hitting himself on the head. He was and like, so you're starting to see the little cracks so like the way serial killers would have. He has those, you know, and it has like that almost immaturity that they, they don't fully garner, you know, and he has like a good show of it. And I really like kind of everything they did with Kurt, even with the like Harrison tease, cause it didn't go anywhere. But when he pulled up to him, it was like, fuck, like, man like because he's like i thought man the ritual didn't go his way so he's gonna need someone to replace him and it's like the symbolism of like dexter killed his son he killed dexter's son like i thought it was gonna really come to head there but no he just offered him a job which he did that green hair girl he did offer her a job first so it doesn't mean harrison's out of the woods yet i'll say with kurt but obviously now we have a full clear like look at are big bad and where do you think this goes now kirkland because now harrison seems like well, he's gonna be working at his diner yeah hopefully he moved that girl off his front lawn because i was surprised he just went right back in his house like what happened if kurt was like hey i got that like some guy drove up like hey i got that football i bought for you there's just this dead green hair <laughs> girl like he, he didn't hide that at all no not at all um yeah no i i, I find it very interesting that he's like just paired up with Kurt now in an indirect manner of just like working for him. So we're assuming I'm just going to get more scenes with those two. And I think the dialogue there is going to be really interesting because there's just that impending doom of like Dexter killed this guy's son who this guy is very dangerous. So, um, I mean, Harrison's already like, he's got, he can't control his mouth. Talk (laughs) Like, I guess he's been on narcotics and alcohol. So he, he let it slip up of Jim Lindsay's not his actual name. Um, I can only imagine something is going to get just, uh, I don't know, set loose on, on Kurt so that he knows that of Dexter and Dexter's lies. Um, I must say, though, I'm so glad that like the reveal on Kurt happened super early in this episode because every single episode, I'm like, okay, hey, we better see Kurt as the killer <laughs> so I don't have to hear Taylor's defense on this extremely guilty client You're of his. You're afraid I was right. That's what was going on. <laughs> no, I was just so upset that you thought you were right. 
<laughs> and you thought we were wrong because it just like I, I guess it just for me when I saw it's like when we watched the Batman in in March and I see a guy with a bat cape come from a roof to the ground I'm like oh that's Batman and this was like you tell me oh no that's not Batman and I was like what no like this is clearly Kurt like this is like he has the same body shape he has Clancy Brown's fucking eyes like <laughs> after that episode Chris from Marvel Alliance and Meshmi like yeah those were Clancy's eyes I'm like yeah I know like it, to me it was just so clear in the day like this is the dude but you, you never knew because they did introduce that like red herring of the older like the the businessman now we still he's don't still know. sketchy yeah, yeah he's still sketchy we don't know if there's a connection there but at least if we were wondering oh was there only like it was he the old hunter dude clearly he's yeah. not the old hunter dude at, at this lot at least no yeah and i mean this was actually the first episode i'd, I'd watch with shay because this is the first episode <laughs> that actually worked on my goddamn tv <laughs> thank you crave i was expecting i had to go on the the iphone or the ipad or something but no it actually worked on my playstation so that was nice and uh when harrison and kurt were sitting down at the diner shay was asking like oh like this guy's gonna get murdered right i'm like well no like he usually just goes after women but he has been thrown off his game here, so we'll, yeah. we'll see what happens. I don't know. Harrison's got a pretty face. Maybe maybe he gets Harrison to start wearing a wig or something. <laughs> or next episode, Harrison just does the same approach. Like, you, this is what you want, and he just full, and we just get full Harrison. We get the full Harry. Oh, man. <laughs> and Kurt, just Kurt so, would be so pissed. so pissed. All these victims oh, like keep bringing God. in are stripping, you know? Like, <laughs> <laughs> like it goes throughout the town like oh you gotta strip if you want to get rid of Kurt but and this is the thing that's uh, interesting now like you look at all, like a, like okay the, at least the earlier seasons when you have the ice truck killer he did these kills similar like his mom got chopped up and he's trying to send a message to Dexter Trinity had this terrible childhood and he reenacted that with his victims it's gonna be interesting to see like what the because when he says this is not how it's supposed to happen and clearly there's some sort of trigger point so it's like what is the story between, okay, he's very friendly to someone, he gets them to a nervous place, he locks them up, and he watches them for, I'll assume a weekend, could be longer, but still, let's say a weekend, he watches them for a weekend, lets them go and shoots them, and I'm wondering, and obviously, I, I, have, I have no prediction, because it's going to be something that the writers like cook up, but I'm very curious to go, like, what is that origin? I imagine that maybe, because... In this episode, he was talking about him and Matt. He said, like, oh, it doesn't even compare to me and my father and the arguments we had. I wonder if there's, like, some form of punishment that he, his dad would lock him in a room for weeks and then he'd let him out and, like, pretend like pretend he was going to shoot him, something like that. Like, he never actually did shoot mm -hmm. him, but the dad was, like, intimidating Kurt. Like, oh, you better run. Like you gotta, Or maybe he was, like... I guarantee you maybe we'll get a flashback of Kurt running like some actor playing as Kurt and the dad would like shoot around him like to scare him or something like I think it's going to come back to because this season with Dexter and Harrison but obviously Kurt and Matt and Kurt and Dexter remember last week they had that conversation about being fathers and everything like that fathers and son are like a big like theme so far so I feel like whatever the cause of the trauma is has to be Kurt's dad Taylor do you have any theories of what are you agreeing with me or do you have any other theories for your client of why he might be so fucked up now hitting himself in the head after you see naked people i think he did some some drawings when he was younger and oh yeah you know, he, like want to see them dad me and ethan like, were no in a son. weekly draw club maybe they were yeah but no i think you're onto something there i think that he probably had something that was i don't want to say equivalent but a similar origin to what he treats women like so mm -hmm. it has to involve a gun like just going out hunting maybe on a hunting trip or something like that and the dad would just kind of like really just torture him or scare him or do something. But it seems the, like he, he didn't pay that forward and do it to his own son, but he didn't give his son really like any kind of love or any attention. He just bailed him out. Well, here's my add on. Maybe it's uh, maybe because we don't know what's like obviously Kurt's mom hasn't come to conversation, but I was going to say, why is it always women he's picking, not young men then? Because it's kind of like Trinity would pick like, OK, his mom died. So he kills his mom. His dad died from a bludgeon. He bludgeoned a guy. What if he's picking? What, uh, he was picking specifically indigenous young women, right? Yeah. So I'm wondering what the origins of Kurt's mother is, and if this is something maybe Kurt's dad did to his mom instead of him. Mm. The way I point, because like, is indigenous women like it's indigenous people and it's women, so there has to be some correlation there. And because I, I don't think there's anything, I don't think they're playing a racism angle or something like that. I think they're just playing like something happened to this guy younger. It's an impact of now. What do you think, uh, Kirk? Lynn? Well, I'm um, mess it up now, you know. <laughs> Kurt, Kurt Lynn. Or do you say my name, Kirk Lynn? Stop doing that. Put your on. <laughs> yeah, it's. <laughs> I, I'm excited <laughs> what that reveal is. I'm wondering if it's like <laughs> Matt stripping in the woods, 
<laughs> gets super pissed off at him, starts hey, shooting. Yeah. Oh shit over there. I right, Taylor, <laughs> you gotta at some point you gotta get this episode and put something else on that screen that Kurt's looking at in the <laughs> He's Hey, stop doing out. that. Yeah, yeah, we gotta find we gotta find like, hey, stop that. <laughs> this is not what it's about. The history uh, like his body language in that scene was just so hilarious that he's actually yeah. like going on the mic. Stop it. <laughs> stop <laughs> <laughs> like he just lost all of his power and his intimidation in that one scene. But uh no, I like I I don't really know what the what the uh the scene's going to be like of the flashback just explaining that tear between Kurt and his son. But uh I like what you guys pitched. I I I think that's fairly likely and um I don't know, I'm just excited for that reveal. I would imagine it would happen within the next two episodes. Maybe not next episode, maybe the one after. Um I don't know. I I just think there's a lot like like uh i don't know hinted at at the end of this episode that i i can imagine what next episode is going to be like and i'm mm-hmm. very excited for that um but i i think kurt is going to be put on the back burner for an episode and then touched upon in the next one well and i can't remember which one of you two were saying it but when we were talking about you know uh like uh fuck kurt <laughs> i almost call him kurt kurt <laughs> finding out about you know dexter i feel like that's why harrison is there as a character now for them to be working yeah. together that indirectly harrison might say something and that's gonna you know Kurt's gonna get him drunk <laughs> yeah <laughs> give him some, some oxy some molly. yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly he's gonna lick her up and get this no but i think that's why it's obviously he's just doing it to pay it forward pass along everything like that but i think harrison working there now is uh not good for the morgan slash Lindsay family and we no. should talk about that because so I agree with you, Kirk, on that like Kurt will be on the back burner because it's very interesting. Like, how is this going to line where Dexter is going to be after Kurt at some point while this other stuff's going to be happening? Because so as I, I think I mentioned this in my predictions episode, and I mentioned this in uh, or the, sorry the last season episode, I mentioned this at the beginning of the season. I was like, man, I just want like I don't need them to fully go back there and anything like that. I just want to know what's going on with some of these Miami characters, right? And I just wonder, too, like, are we ever going to, like, even address any of that? Because there was part of me that just like, oh, we're just going to stay in Iron Lake and it might just be about Dex and these people. He'll get killed or go to jail and say la vie. But the second she walked in that room and you heard some guy in the distance saying La Guerta, uh, or La, La, Gu- La Mar- <laughs> Maria La Guerta. Oh, she's back. No. Uh, Lieutenant uh, Angel Batista is like, oh my God, it's actually happening. Now, I will preference this. Is this the biggest fucking coincidence in the world? Yes. And is it like if someone were to say they don't like that because of that reason? I understand because I'm someone that hates coincidence. I will just take it because I just wanted to get Batista in this or like he's the one i want to see out of them all miami so the fact that we got any of them was happy but the fact it was him is really good and i love that it's indirectly he is setting her on a course to figure out who dexter is and we literally went from him talking about like oh you know there's this trin and trinity's coming out a lot we didn't see trinity's episode and i'm really wondering when we're gonna get trinity john lifgow because it's just like it keeps feeling like it's gonna happen and anyway so to get to the point was she talks to Batista about this guy, you know, and, you know, oh, actually came about Deborah first. Oh, she's a great detective. Really sad story. You know, she died and her brother died in a really fucked up way, left a child, couldn't remember his name. And he walks away. Oh, his name was Harrison. And of course, she's like, OK, you know, that's kind of strange. I just met a Harrison. But, you know, that could be whatever. She doesn't really question that much when she goes home, which we'll talk about the party scene with Harrison. But obviously from that party scene, he got a little intoxicated more so than a little. But and he revealed to Audrey that his dad is lying about who his name is. So then Angela, late night already, because we've so they've shown this before that she is not like it might be a small town, but she's smart. And she might have been some wrong about like the uh, some of the Matt stuff. But that's because Dexter was literally fucking with her investigation it wasn't her doing that so she goes there and this episode literally ends with her uh printing off an obituary for dexter morgan and the reason i was in shock because i thought eventually we could get this point but i thought she was going to hear this info and then all next episode were her being like oh you know asking questions maybe looking into it maybe not like going back and forth but she literally just that same night fucking cat cracked the code like i said to Emma, i'm like oh what's gonna happen is she's gonna get a picture of jim and she's gonna like call or message batista and say like hey is this that same guy you were talking about but no she figured out all on her fucking own and just printed i, I i'm shocked that i kind of like to that next episode where we've moved past that it's just yeah. so now we got five episodes and already she knows and she he's gonna get questioned there's no fucking way about it no, absolutely, and they had zero interaction this episode, uh, mm-hmm. if I'm not mistaken, and 
<laughs> like I yeah, I, I'm I'm with you. I'm so glad that we just like jumped basically skipped the cutscene of like her going through the hoops of like, okay, what's his name? Dexter? Okay, let's let's find out who this guy is. Like she just did it all in her lonesome. People might have an issue, be like, Oh, okay, come on. Come on, like what's this? But like as a viewer, let's just get fucking to it, man. Yeah, like this act yeah. this episode already had so much like build up of anticipation. Um a couple scenes that we'll meant like we'll we'll dive into, I'm sure, but like just one right off the hop is when he goes into like like syringe that guy and then just like a siren goes on oh. right away. And initially Travis that's that's the scene that I thought you were talking about because like two minutes after that is the Batista, Batista scene yeah. so I'm like oh my god this is so intense <laughs> oh, and yeah, then no. right my after that was Batista was, yeah it was because I just wasn't <laughs> I don't know why we didn't even talk about this last week that they were talking well actually was it last week or this week no they just introduced at the front of this episode right that they were gonna take the road trip that wasn't last yeah week, right? the, yeah no just this okay. episode so I felt like if we would have got last week we would have sat within digestion like okay like yeah the tra- like maybe we would have figure that out so that was probably smarter than that this episode they just decide oh we're going but even then they go to new york it's not like oh for sure we're gonna see batiste there again that's where the coincidence comes but i love and uh, david zares is still like batista wasn't the most amazing character in the world but he always played him as like a cool motherfucker and he can still do that you know like he's really and they talk about it's funny like we talk about trinity a lot and bay harbor butcher comes up a lot and i really am starting to think that we have a chance because they talk about butcher a lot and we saw batista we have a chance of getting that fucking trial ending that I want for either Joe or Dexter, and we're getting we're getting closer to it because we just ju- we jumped light years into f- Angela fault like finding out that he was Dexter. I thought that would be like episode like eight or seven stuff. This is episode five, and she's already there. So my hope is with Batista being introduced that it is laying breadcrumbs that this might not be the last time you see him. If it is, then I'm just really happy they oh, he's trying him. to get with angela that's what he wants. oh yeah yeah after dexter gets in prison like hey you want to go <laughs> you want to hit up but like <laughs> i just was i was so th- <laughs> oh boy oh cut your wood i thought you said i got your wood i'm like i think that's still no. low for but yeah <laughs> I got your wood. he just texts i got your wood and he's like she's like i just want to know is this dexter morgan like, oh sorry but uh so i'm just happy we see uh saw some of the original character shows what do you think taylor about uh batista came back and uh, what do you think about now him kind of leading the him and Audrey leading Angela to the conclusion that Jim Lindsay is not who uh, she knows him to be? Again, that that's the scene that really made me like readjust in my seat, like uh, on the couch, like holy shit, like we really got this. Like I wasn't expecting it so soon, and uh, yeah, it just it sets the way. I I thought that this was really just going to be it. She's just at this conference and we're just going to have this little like connection here in Easter egg at Batista. I didn't think that we would have got like, Hey, this whole sit down and Batista's going to give insights and name <laughs> drops and like, Oh, the, the detective that cracked the case was Deborah Morgan. Oh, can I speak to her? No, she died along with her brother. You think she can help they us? had a, they had a son named Harry or he had a son. Hey, named oh, like, what? Yeah, I missed I that season. It just, it just, <laughs> he kept like adding more and more and more, which it was such a Batista thing to do. Yeah. And it like, he, he fit right back into the character so well, but it, it, it's it set the pace and I'm super excited to see where this goes because this opens up the can of worms where hey you got Angela that's gonna question like hey why are you dead which Dexter could spin like hey I lost my wife Rita you see what Trinity did to that and I lost my sister Deb and I couldn't handle it anymore I had to just start a fresh new life get away and it mm-hmm. had whatever with Harrison I thought he was with a good you know my girlfriend at the time yada yada he could write that off but it doesn't answer for like there's still a few other things like because it's gonna open up the can of worms with harrison obviously who didn't know about rita until after angela's daughter showed him the podcast we learned this episode so that kind of opened it up well we uh, don't know that yet they haven't clarified if he knew about rita or not yet like he listened to it last week but we don't know i'm inclined to say that he didn't know until because like he had his he acted out when he found out in that podcast. Like yeah. that's where he connected the dots. So I think that's where really he exploded. So yeah, no, I think you're hundred percent right. That next week Dexter gets to spin the wheels a little bit. I just think those scenes are going to be really fun of him having to explain mm-hmm. all that and everything. But yeah, easily he can just say like, it is like, like, okay, if I was dating someone and they start, like I said, like, why did you, change your identity and he opens up with well i faked my death that would probably be it for me i think i'd be out at that moment and be like okay hey, like why didn't you just move away you know like why did you leave your son i know like and like taylor says he'll give this whole spiel about oh i was in a dark place all this stuff but as someone that's in that relationship i do hope angela 
put some like space between them because like there's only so much you could swallow and i feel like you'd be like yeah how, like what did you do oh i drove my boat out in a de- in a storm in miami and i drove that boat out i jumped off the boat i swam back to the shore i got a bag and i went to iron lake and i just think yeah like, okay so like I, I hope that even if it's not right away that some she gets this conversation dexter's gonna smooth talk or he's i think he will say like taylor saying like oh yeah i just want to start over but i hope eventually she's kind of like eh I'm not buying, or just something's not right to the point. Maybe they don't break up, but just they they take some space because that is like again, it's even just the fact of like, yeah, you left your son alone because we know why he left his son because oh, he had a dark pasture, he wanted to stay away, didn't want to put his son in danger. If he's not going to reveal that part to Angela, it's like okay, you could start your life over, but why did you leave your why did you leave your son? And because she even said a few episodes ago, remember like. She was talking about some character of like, oh, I couldn't imagine a person that abandons their child. And Dexter's like, oh, yeah, I know. So it's like now even that she's going to realize now this is a guy that like left his child for 10 years. Yeah, no, I'm I I think just the way that they're going to tackle it in the show is uh, like each character has a lot going on in their Mm -hmm. own side. So they'll they'll probably come up with a reasonable enough excuse to not just have like a direct confrontation like right at the start of the next episode um but i i think she is gonna come in like pretty aggressively uh not like the sly the sly i don't know cop that's like trying to like just get him to admit something like on his own i i think she's gonna come up and just face him but i don't know like she like she still really has no leads on her missing girls case so like she's pretty preoccupied with that as well as the podcaster that's like her new like buddy cop with her which i gotta say i love that pairing it's so fun Mm -hmm. (laughs) uh i was i was pumped when they were going on the road trip together but um and then also just like like thinking of the billionaire dude that's gonna pop in and be a factor at some point um and then just back (laughs) and then just on dexter's size i I feel like he's just like he's like trying to find someone to kill at this point like he's he's blaming it on just oh well these people did wrong to my son but like really i think he's just thirsting for more bloodshed and i feel like that's pretty much like his main priority like he didn't really seem too preoccupied with like what harrison's going through in this episode and it's fitting for like what a serial killer would be like right (laughs) um i think at the start of the show i was uh you guys probably thought the same but i was just curious where the son dynamic was gonna go and i was wondering if he was gonna be more of like a loving father but i think it's pretty evident at this point that he like he wants to be (laughs) but also he's still just like a sociopath psycho killer so um it's it's interesting but i i just think for the angela dexter dynamic it's going to be limited just as they structure the show to try and just build up anticipation instead of just have like a 10 minute dialogue scene between the two characters at the start of next episode yeah it could be a lot of i need to talk to you and stuff popping up and that could be like the emergency oh no we gotta go (laughs) i I would actually love it if like next week's episode was just a full hour of them in a room talking because i'd love the writers to challenge (laughs) themselves like hey you're gonna do a whole episode of angela and dexter in this room this is a train scene from uh Loki, the, the exact same yeah. set. <laughs> They're on a train too. <laughs> They're like, "Oh, I'll meet you midway from New York." But uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I am very excited to talk about Dexter's mindset after this next ad break. And we're back. So yeah, I I want to get into because this is something we're obviously so Clyde Phillips. He left at season four, right? And we've talked about this before. Where okay, he's back, but he didn't get to take over. There was something in season seven that I really liked, where they were starting to do what they do in Breaking Bad, where okay, you're cheering for Walter White, you understand why he's doing what he's doing, and then as the show starts to end, you kind of go like, uh, eh, you're no longer that good person. And I feel that like Dexter, you could always argue because he's taking lives, like he's not a good person, but. In season seven, they started to propose that, like, yeah, he is the problem. Like, he ruins all these people's, like, like when Deb was starting to put together in the Guerra, I was like, hey, like, I, we get he's doing something right of taking out these criminals, but at the end of the day, he's ruining all these people's lives and leaving them in the, the battlefield, per se. So what happened was, season eight happened. They dropped that storyline and just, oh, Dexter's back to being a vigilante, <laughs> and here we go. So it sucked, but they're really leaning into, like, okay, what does it mean to be around this person? And I feel like they're starting to do that again because... I'm like, and I like that. I'm fine with the protagonist of the show I disagree with. I'm completely on Team Ghost Deb right now. Like, everything she says is 100% correct. Like, you don't need to do this. And remember the whole point of the code, and we'll get into that too, but like, was like, I'm going to get the people that they can't catch, right? That slips through the cracks. Logan and the team had 
all these guys, they I know later on they established Dexter says, oh, I'm doing this for vengeance. But still, so right away, that whole code reason why we would cheer for him goes out the window because the cops, even if they're smaller town cops, they had it all figured out. They had the names. They got there. Logan found himself, and he had a whole fucking SWAT team to take down this yeah. guy. So, like, Dexter's lost that footing. And, okay, for the vengeance, but the ghost of saying that, the guy on the tail said that, like, oh, look at you, what type of father are you? And that's where when you said he's – wanting to be a good dad no i think he thinks he's a good dad i think he's just like lied to himself because he even says like i'm a great father it's like no you're not <laughs> like you literally yeah. your son all he literally almost died the night before and he left that morning and just was gone the entire day because he had to like kill this he didn't have i get it because he's dexter yeah and everything, but i almost feel like it is an excuse to go kill a guy it's like you don't need vengeance on this random drug dealer because yeah it's not like trinity taking out rita it was just like a, and i think them having the drug dealer say like, it i didn't they took it i didn't hand it to him directly was the way of saying like i get that this it's definitely a crime but i don't think you need to be killing me right now but it's just dexter looking for a reason and that's why like yeah. I said, he's very to me like walter whitish like i don't agree with anything you're doing it's entertaining what's going on but it's like i'm not on your side at all right now but. and like just just like the difference from Dexter New Bloods Dexter to like the classic Dexter just mm-hmm. sticking to his code like the, the the code being so I don't know like reason number it, one in in a weird yeah reason number one in a weird way it makes like what he's doing f- sort of righteous because yes. he's like killing these bad guys and then like you said like he's only killing the people that slip through the cracks like is this different Dexter due to the fact that he's just been out of the game for so long and like he's been out of it so long and then he popped his cherry and he's like oh man this feels so good I gotta just keep killing and he's just kind of forgetting the code is this because he's just so out of his element that the sun factor is now in it or is it just purely like a time thing I I think it's a combo of all of them, but I think it is just the thirst for kill again because like even how he did it to me was super sloppy. You look at the original show and one of my favorite seasons, season three with Miguel Prado. Miguel is about to like buy a bunch of fucking kill room shit, and Dex like, no, that's not how you do it. And he takes him to Home <laughs> Depot and they make it look like they're going on a fishing trip, so they buy a bunch of other stuff, but then they also get these things. He just goes to this fucking veterinarian who he they know just 100% who he is. They are yeah. first name basis, has his billing address, and he's just starting to take shit from them. Yeah, I'm not saying he's stealing it. He's going to pay for it. But still, the old Dex would find, okay, I got to find the right way to do this. Between that and even doing that in the daytime, all that was just so, like, it's so sloppy what we already talked about. And, like, oh, obviously, I feel like we can probably agree, like, it's going to catch up to him if this is a mini series. Like, it's like it's not going to go good for Dexter either way. But it is, like, I think he's just so desperate for another kill, he doesn't care. Like, even then, when he's like, he got in that guy's house, like, it's about the code. He found one pill. He's like, yeah, fuck it, let's do it. Like, he, he needed, <laughs> yeah. And, like, he was right, but still, it's just like he was just looking for anything. He could have found a fucking just a magazine about it. It's like, oh, this guy's stuff. a video gamer. Oh, yeah. he's going down. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's, I bet he's getting people. That's how he starts them, you know? But, uh, <laughs> Taylor, what do you think Dexter's mindset as far as uh, what he's doing right now with the killing? You got the drug deal. You had lots of violent interactions with Ghost Debra this episode. Uh, he's compromised. Like, He's paralleling Kurt, and I think that's kind of the gist of this <laughs> whole good. season is that they're just kind of in the same kind of position. And it's it's unfortunate because, yeah, you guys are right. He comes from being a very composed serial killer. He's got his code. He's got his plan. He looks in, a, in advance. Like, he studies, right? He gets to know his target. Mm-hmm. Didn't do anything like that. Like, you guys <laughs> no, said, no. he was ready to go, like, oh, you podcast, you're fucking done. Like, oh, <laughs> for a walk you're dead like he's just all over the board and like you go for I, a walk yeah the you're streets aren't dead. safe the iron I loved, like butchers uh, out there i loved when he was just about to like he's pulling the needle out and he's like sometimes you gotta do drugs <laughs> it's like wow he's just out for blood but uh um, well and even then the way his narration is it feels more like violent it feels more and like when you said like the old extra episode, he would find this person and then he's going to trail them for the episode, find mm-hmm. out their routine. He's like, oh, that guy's at the fucking bar. I'm just going to go take him out. And like even then, like he was going to kill this dude. And then what was he going to go kill the other drug dealer too? Like if he got any sort of aim, like he was about to go on a mini spree there in a week. He's taking out Matt. He's taking out and he's going to take out these two drug dealers. You know, it's just so. Oh, Jesus. Whoa. What's going on? <laughs> this is weird. Let's remove that guy. Whoa. There's an intruder. 
<laughs> so for the audio listeners, Kirkland came in with another account as not Jim Lindsay, but man, it scared the fuck out of me because I thought we were about to be hacked. Because I'm like, I've invited no one else to this review, and I know all the people that have the logins are probably asleep because there are Eastern GUA people. So I'm like, who the, and our GUA people would never just self invite themselves into the cast. So what is happening now? Whoa. Why is there a second? What is happening? <laughs> I wanted to see if I could do what you did. <laughs> well, how did you do that? Because for me, my Chrome like literally crashed. That wasn't my fault of like going back oh, really? or anything like that. <laughs> I opened and then, the and then stream yards. When I brought it back up, it was like, wait a minute, who they replaced me with? <laughs> who the fuck's still in there? <laughs> yeah, because Kurt comes in. Hey guys. <laughs> No, he's pissed. Know. Yeah, what are doing? you doing? <laughs> Taylor's stripping. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Turn that son of hell off. Stop it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but anyways, like he would do all this info, and yeah, it's just like, oh, this guy's at the bar. Fuck it, I'm going right now and just doing. It. I just feel like, and again, I love it because Dexter's still smart. Right when that happens, he says, "Okay, Plan B," and he starts beating the shit of that drug deal. And I love the way he played that. Like, is this the guy? Is this the guy that tried to murder my son? Like everything like that. It was smart, but like. Five seconds later, they would have seen Dexter just like putting this guy in the trunk and be like, hey, what's going on? And like, that's what I mean. Like, he's in Iron Lake, the sun's out, it's white everywhere, so it's fucking bright everywhere he goes. And he's just doing this <laughs> at a pub where anyone could walk out. It's like, what are you doing, dude? Like, from the my questionable of him and then almost just his like his code, it's just like, you just, des- you just, des- uh, he's deserves to get caught now because he's getting so sloppy. I think, like, my last I, point in, too. In my defense, I wouldn't say he, like, he's, he's in your sloppy. Defense. But he's he's pretty good on his toes. He knew how to act in every single instance. But like, if he was in a big city, out. he'd be fucked. Well, I, I, yeah, that's what yeah. I was gonna bring that up though. Like in the original Dexter show, he's killed people like in fairly public, or like not killed them, but like injected them to for abjection to later kill oh, no, them no. in he fairly like public air storage once in the airport. So he's well, I was even people, gonna say yeah. like the one that I had in mind was like at the shooting range. Like multiple people were just shooting, and he just like climbs up behind this guy and stabs him. It's just like oh, okay, like maybe maybe this is the more realistic turn of events, but yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Are you going to defend those? <laughs> no, no, I'm, I hate, no, because the airport one I hate. I hate that he literally, he's in an airport, he drugs a guy and takes him to baggage claim. Anyone could walk in at any moment, you're killing this dude. And no, yeah. the shooting range. I don't like when Dexter does public kills because yeah. that's when it gets more unbelievable. But now I think they, they saved it because I like that they're trying to make it de- him seem desperate and to me, make them public. They use that because in the la- la- like the latter seasons was just oh he just got away with it very easy he just swooped this guy up this was like no he wasn't gonna get away with it he was almost dead to rights he almost screwed up and he should not do that and what we're like what I was gonna say is remember when he got Harrison back and he's like okay that one kill happened but I can just get back to my routine and I don't need the killing I can just be there for Harrison and it feels like that's completely out the window and. It'd be different if Harrison was completely fine. It's like, oh, I have nothing to worry about. He's a great kid. Okay, I still got these urges to kill. His son almost died. He's clearly, like, like, like pushing back on him. They're not getting along, things like that. It's, like, worse than it's ever been from the past, even the first day when he got there. And this is the time he decides to go and kill. So, again, not great father, not great killer, not great boyfriend. You know, he's just – and I I wonder, we always talk about you and Joe, I expect there's going to have to be a time where – he might like I feel like he's gonna have to realize and I think maybe that's why Ghost Deb is there to eventually get it in his head like no you're not a great dad like you're not like it's I, I liked the beginning when he was trying to talk to Harrison of like if there's anyone you could talk to me about and of course Harrison's like why would I trust you all this stuff but I at the beginning thought he was a doting dad but now not so much you know it's funny too in that scene because that was something I was speculating last week of like is he gonna is he gonna just approach Harrison with the blade? Like is he gonna put it back and I don't know, try and get Harrison to explain what happened? But like no, right away he just he confronts him about it and <laughs> he just seemed like so unsure of what to do in the situation. Yeah. Like, hey man, even if you did it, like maybe that's a good thing. <laughs> you know, I'm just paraphrasing. Gives him an animal. That, that's that's the <laughs> There's just like a a guy like ass naked on the table, just like <laughs> saran wrapped. <laughs> All right, it's a son. drug dealer. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Welcome to the definitely, business. Definitely don't want a Kurtz victim. He wouldn't have any of the mass naked. You know? <laughs> no, no, but like I don't know. I just I I liked how um, like 
just un like unequipped Dexter was in that moment to, mm-hmm. to handle the situation because why would he have like good parenting skills like he's had no role models yeah. like that you can't even give Harry that <laughs> why not because Harry's like teaching him how to kill people <laughs> maybe he's like I don't know uh, controlling the urge so he's not just out there chopping people up is that I feel like it's a whole other conversation of is that better I, I guess so but like is, well, even is it Deborah good put that forward, it's not good was, even Dever put that forward like that was child abuse what he did to you like oh yeah pretty much just saying like you should he should just got you help instead of like trying to make <laughs> you a killer and like yeah. again you could play that thing of like the way Harry saw it was like oh well maybe it wasn't gonna work no matter which route so I tried to do this route but yeah there could be a universe where maybe it's like oh yeah and any fair like I don't think it's a situation where if someone gets born to a normal family and they start to have these like dark tendencies, a family might feel very embarrassed. Like, oh, what did we do to cause this? But I don't think any therapist with bad eye of like, oh, this kid was like he saw his parents, uh, his mom murdered in front of him in a very vicious way. He would need a lot of help and he would need a lot of, you know, and it's just but again, that was Harry's choice. But I like Deb being saying that, like, no, that he was wrong to do that. And the same thing of like. I feel like that's Dexter trying to do right. He did get a therapist, right? Obviously, Harrison didn't go to him, but he was trying to take that step. But then, second he found out about drug dealer guy, he was out. He was out of there very quickly. Yeah, for sure. I I still think that's that's the lazy man's like effort. Just oh, I'll just pay for a therapist, and then it's not my problem anymore. I can go chop up some some drug dealers and stuff oh, like yeah. that. But what it's just he, you know. What I guess like what's the route? Because either that or it is the Harry route, right? In his mind, I think it is. I think it's no, absolutely. Yeah. The the route is to not be a serial killer and be <laughs> be an actual approachable dad that's just spending time with his son. But no, I like I, I like it the way it's going for the viewer, the mm-hmm. viewer wise, because I think Kurt is embodying that like new father like role to Harrison. Uh, like he actually just sat down and talked with him at at the diner. Now he doesn't. He's not like accusatory like Dexter was because he doesn't think that he actually killed or like mm-hmm. attacked Ethan on his own like Dexter did but like he, still he's just sat there and kind of listened he's he and he, he it's not like he's just listening to Harrison he's actually like okay well if you, like what's your plan here like like okay you're going out on the world but you have no money and he's like well I've done that already it's just like there's holes in your plan here get some uh, application to to work there and he's just being like a fatherly type figure at least in that mm-hmm. scene and I think we're going to get more of that and it's going to be a really interesting wedge I think between Harrison and Dexter that comes out of this whole Kurt scenario unless I don't know one of them starts stripping then, <laughs> then Kurt's going full full uh <laughs> Postal. <laughs> Don't do it. Here, do you think Kurt's gonna be really mad when Dexter nabs him and he wakes up on the table and he realizes he's butt naked on the table? Like, you think no. And no. He, starts, he starts getting like this anger boner and Dexter just looks down at this plastic. What's going on here? Like, who did I ki- like? What is this, this anger boner? Those yeah. the worst ones. <laughs> yeah. Let me go. Oh, this is not how I'm supposed to be. I'm not naked. Um. Taylor, anything to add on? Um. <laughs> we talked about there with Deborah. Well, how do you feel with Deborah this episode? There was one scene I like where she fucking just yelled at the top of her lungs at him, and then he turned and she was like hugging him. Really yeah. good, really good like cinematography and stuff. But pretty much most of this episode, she was hitting the nail on her head of like you're a terrible father and you're a terrible person. Like just you're you're doing all the wrong things. Yes, yeah, she's doing a good job at just being like I feel like you look at this and you can easily get fooled by the fact that hey like she's not her own real living breathing individual here with her own personality these thoughts and these things that she is say to stay, stating and putting forward are all dexter's thoughts that he's pro- mm-hmm. projecting yes. out there and it's so easy to kind of forget that because everything that he's kind of contemplating like you know i, I like he is my blood harrison is my son and if he were to know the truth he'd be worse than me and i'm a monster myself so that's saying mm-hmm. a lot that speaks volumes so i am Loving everything that Deb is doing by being that consciousness for him and just putting all this out on the table for him. But uh, yeah, the way they handle her and how she transitions, like, yeah, from yelling to like grabbing him by the shoulders and him or like walking out of the hospital and she's like giving him shit and everything like that right after Logan was just having that confrontation with him. It was so good to see the dynamic. So. Well, and I think like what you brought up, that's why I think we had that debate about you or Joe from you, right? Of like, oh, if he were to have all the facts in him, like at the end, would he still be like, oh, well, you know, 
that was wrong. I'm still the good guy. Like, they don't understand. Where I do think Dexter is a character that would eventually get it. And I think the fact that, like you said, these are his thoughts, eventually I think he will realize, oh, like, I, like, all these things that Deborah is saying are true because they're what I was saying. I was telling myself the whole time not to do these things, but he's just. He can't help himself. But yeah, and even stuff like the the Logan thing, I'm surprised he never apologized for that little like shouting match they had in the hospital. Like, I mean, he's just like, just because you're a wrestling coach, you don't know the fucking clue about being a parent or whatever. And mm-hmm. I thought for sure he was going to try and walk that back later on when they talked, but he never really did. And again, I feel like Dexter, kind of the way last week where he nibbled with Kurt, he's kind of getting Logan to be like another suspicious person because he keeps giving him signs and everything like that. Now, at the same time, like, I do think, like, <laughs> Logan was, like, overstepping his boundaries a little bit. Like, one whole, th- like, one line of, like, hey, you got to step up on your son. I think that was enough. You don't got to keep being like, yeah, but you really, you really got to be watching him. Like, I do understand for the cause. But I don't know. I guess it's just. Clearly, as a cop, you'd probably tell that Jim is not looking too happy with the situation. So the fact they kept going, like, no, 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 you really need to listen. Like, you're doing a shit show. And, and then he literally just pushed his arm off. And it was, it, it, you get to see kind of the shades of Dexter. So it's, I just feel like he's going to fucking snap. Like, I feel like there's going to be a point where he's just really going to go banana Dexter sandwich. does? Yeah. And not that he's going to kill him, but just like he might punch him or something. Like, you're going to, like, I feel like when he's in the midst of being caught or something like that, it's like, he just he's gonna headbutt logan like he did uh, <laughs> yeah Dokes. i own you i own you logan yeah. like, we have cameras here just like in the woods <laughs> jim just had cameras me. everywhere in Ireland. Like, <laughs> yeah they had cameras except, in that drug dealer's attic yeah. except kurt's property that's the only one we're yeah. <laughs> we, we that's his own cameras, cameras. <laughs> yeah yeah don't do that yeah no oh, i man. i i really liking logan um i can't remember what episode it was either episode one or two but we just got shades of like him being like an actual good cop not just mm-hmm. like a character that fills the role of like the sergeant you know like someone was lo- three when he was interrogating dexter yeah, yeah yeah exactly because you're just expecting like because every time like before that and even a few times after that scene like he's just been so friendly with dexter like even when he came to the shop today it's like hey man thanks for coming like all we gotta do is register that you came and that's it and like yeah. it's been that's like that's been his, his interactions and even <laughs> but like yeah, you, you mentioned episode three, that interrogation scene was so great. And then him just like being a good cop here and like f- like actually getting the SWAT to the drug dealers. Uh, I feel like that's something that's kind of new. And I don't know, we just kind of assume that the cops are just so brain dead and they just are slow on those calls or whatever. But um, and yeah, just like him interacting with Dexter, uh, like <laughs> Dexter beating the shit out of out of the the drug dealer there. And again, Dexter was on his back heels. He wasn't really expecting them to to be there. He was gonna chop up this guy. But um, no, I, I I'm I'm just really liking the character of Logan, and I can't see his his route ending well because I think he's just too good of a cop to be hanging around with Dexter. I think he's gonna catch on to Dexter and. I was comparing him to Dokes early on. Maybe his fate will be similar to Dokes. Well, so. I, th- I think who I'm comparing him to now is LaGuerta, who LaGuerta, good person, like good enough cop, figured out the Dexter thing and Dexter decided. And this is like what I saw about in season seven when they literally, Dexter's going to kill LaGuerta. And Harry's like, this isn't part of the code and everything. Like it's like, yeah, but I got to kill her or she's going to catch me. You know, like that's the, technically the number one rule of the code is don't get caught. And. I do wonder if they are going to really push hard the whole Dexter not being our... Like, he's our, our protagonist, but not the likable protagonist. I could actually see him maybe killing Logan, and that's the moment in the series where we're kind of supposed to be like, eh, again, like, we can't... We're not really with you. And that's how I always felt with LaGuardia. Like, LaGuardia is nowhere near one of my favorite characters in Dexter, but when he decided, like, I'm going to kill LaGuardia, and him and Deborah just killed LaGuardia, I was like, what the fuck is this? Like, you guys, like, you took this cop's life just to like get away with it and the next season she's like oh well she's a bench now and that really sucked eh? and they move forward so I think Logan could because I was always wondering if Logan was going to start putting ideas in Angela's head that he wasn't the guy luckily it was Batista so how are those trains going to interact of Angela finding out that Jim is Dexter and then maybe Logan having some suspicions about Dexter because this episode now he would both times with both drug dealers Dexter was going to kill him but then they caught those drug dealers or found him you know committed suicide or OD'd 
there's going to be a time I feel like Logan's going to be looking into someone and they will go missing. And then that's when it's going to be like, okay, he's going to start looking into it more. And that could lead to the Jim Lindsay thing. Cause there's nothing to lead to Jim Lindsay right now. Then, okay. He got in a fight with that dude. But if he would have taken one of those lives, I feel like Logan would have been like, okay, well he heard his name. He was around, he was looking into it as well. And now this guy's dead missing. And then mm-hmm. they got this camera footage. That's the other place. I don't have camera. Remember is that fucking Kermit uh, crematory place? No cameras there apparently <laughs> of Jim just putting in Matt's body. But, uh, yeah, it's gonna be interesting. I like, I like not that I want Dexter to do that, but I do kind of for the show. I would love it if he did something that kind of unforgivable, especially because Logan so far seems like a good dude. So if he does, or maybe even Harrison, if what if happens if Logan puts something together about Harrison, Harrison takes his life because we still haven't had that conversation of Dexter and Harrison about the Dark Urges because we talked about it last week. Is it he's gonna be this way the whole time, or was with Ethan with that him trying? We still don't know. So, no, absolutely. Taylor, what do you think Logan's fate's going to be? Oh, I'd like to say positive. He's already gone through a little uh, down. Uh, the mini breakup? Episode. Mini breakup, yeah. Oh, my so, God. So I think I hope he comes out on top a little bit. <laughs> I think he'll, if anything, I think he could see Angela getting killed and he becomes a new kind of like sheriff in town or something like that. I feel like that was like maybe a, a little bit of a possible foreshadow of her being away and he just kind of like fit into the mm-hmm. takeover a little bit there. Um yeah. What do you guys think about when uh, Harrison was at the party and that chick just comes up and is like, you saved my life. She was looking for wood. <laughs> she was looking for wood. What do you think that, about the chick that was like carbon H into me? Did they, oh, okay, my God. Two, two things. One, that hero thing that's happened to me many times. But two, <laughs> did the H thing actually happen, though, or that was in his mind? Because no one ever mentioned it after later on. Hang on. So. I got I to gotta clarify. So you were high on ecstasy and you're like, this girl's like, you're my hero. And he had no, an angry erection. Technically, he wasn't high on erection at before. <laughs> I should hope not. It doesn't. Drugs don't work like that. High no, on erection? I, Is that you said? I didn't know. I meant that he wasn't high at all, and then she kissed him and gave him the drug. So he was clear. No, he was drinking he beers. No. In, in my story, I just spit that pill back in her face. I'm not doing this, and then they kicked me out of the party. But like, no, I, I, like um, you held it under your tongue. So it's like a fake. Oh, I like That's drugs. What I was thinking and you spit well, them out I was saying later. The same thing. Yeah, yeah, I did. I'm like, all he has to do. I'm hoping he's smart enough but no he just fucking took that and then took the other drug he was like they gave him the get him from the greek camera where it was like the shot of jonah hill when he's all fucked <laughs> yeah. up like they did that too i'm but- alive <laughs> 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 logan just hits him with an adrenaline shot yeah but i i don't know if that carving thing actually happened because w- we'll find out but i feel I- like if that did someone would be like like hey you know what harrison did that's fucking weird maybe everyone's so fucked up they don't remember but i almost took it because he was seeing stuff that it maybe didn't actually happen i don't know i took it as it actually happened because i don't know I, I, you, you said we'll probably get touched upon in the next episode i feel like if it if it didn't i maybe i'm i miss i miss uh understanding the, the the question here are you saying like the entire interaction didn't happen just the carving in the eight, like him actually putting the knife on her. Dick. Yeah. Okay. So in yeah. my my mind, what I thought you were asking is like, did the chick actually ask him to do that, or did he just walk up and start carving an H into her, <laughs> her body? Because I felt I'm like that would have that would have needed an explanation this episode if that was yeah. the case. He's like, he just came at me and started carving his name <laughs> into my leg. Well, uh, uh, what was interesting, I was waiting because when Dexter went to the bar this episode, that was the same chick that saw him supposedly yell in the truck, but she didn't yeah, mention shit. So I was I'm waiting still, for that. I'm still stick with my theory that people don't act when he's talking to people that's people don't see that that's still just all in his mind because i feel like she was gonna be like oh you're under a lot of stress like i saw you that one day because she was talking about him being completely stressed out so that oh here it comes she's gonna mention truck thing and she never did and i like i said i think they're kind of showing that with the truck thing and with harrison the h that there's things that happen in their mind that don't actually happen that no one sees yeah i mean it's it's already happened a few times now yeah. so yeah. Uh, yeah, and that party was, uh, I don't know, it was wild. I, I loved when he showed up there, and he, he's, like, realizing that all of them want him to be this party animal, and he looked almost, like, defeated. He's like, yeah, let's get fucking wild, and, like, everyone's excited and stuff. I love the idea that it was the fuck you guys list party and stuff. That was <laughs> that was good. But, yeah, it was, um, it got us to where we need to be. It got another person on Dexter's table. I, don't, I guess Harrison's just looking for anything. And I guess I will say that surprisingly, because I feel like this happens a lot in shows, I actually quite like the guy that is playing Harrison as we've gone more forward. I never disliked him, but 
just the fact that you have this character, this all we knew as was a fucking baby 10 years ago, and now it's actual character, could have had a chance of being, oh, I don't really care about him. I am yeah. interested in Harris, and I'm interested to see where he goes. And I think the actor's doing a really good job, and I like to see with Audrey. I like that Audrey was the clear-headed one at the house, and they kind of show that even though everyone's getting fucked up, she wasn't. So it's... It's going to be interesting to see, like, all these chips falling down. But clearly Harrison's in, like, uh, tailspin mode if he's just popping drugs left and right. Yeah, and I, I wonder how much, like, the whole interaction with Ethan could have possibly played in with that. Like, like if, like, is he is he torn up about what he did to Ethan? Or is he torn up of his dad, like, accusing him? And that's what makes him just go on this bender of, like, mm-hmm. yeah, just get fucked up. I just want to forget about this for right now. Um, I'm very intrigued and like what you said, uh, I'm, I'm really liking the guy that's playing Harrison on, on the first episode. It's like, all right, well, 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 who's this guy? I don't know this actor. We're like, well, 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 what's he going to bring to the table here? But I, I think he's doing a great job with the character and, um, like his performance is great. And I also just think the character is really good. He's not just this like really timid character. Like he actually is f- pretty damn headstrong and like confident and, uh, yeah, no, I, I, I just, I, I like him. He's, he's, he's a likable character for someone that's possibly assaulted some kid and pinned him as a school shooter. That I guess he was already a school shooter. It's not like Harrison wrote the list or anything like that. Well, um, no, he well, wasn't a school shooter. Yeah, that's, no, he, I, you he, know, you know, what I, you know, what I mean, like, like he had the motivation for it. He, he had the minority fuck list. reporting him. He's like going in the future. He's like in the future, we saw <laughs> yeah. you kill people. No, I arrest. saw it. Yeah, no, I get you saying. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You made an interesting point there. Like, it's not like Harrison wrote the list. I will say on that note, he seemed quite taken aback when he was with uh, Angela's daughter at the party. And was like, oh, how did you get the list? Like he was intrigued, like mm. almost as if he didn't want anyone else to really be looking at it or paying mind to it. But I mean, I, you could just brush it off if you want. But I just thought that was interesting. No, I that's still... a good point because no one really knows where the list came from, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and then that's him asking her. It says like from the desk of Harrison. <laughs> <laughs> His little signature on it. Yeah, I, I don't know. I'm still, I know it's part of my bias, but I'm still holding out hope that we'll have to see. But I still think that he tried it out and it it wasn't exactly for him. Because I still feel like, I just took it as that list was, again, just him being reminded of, like, man, I just ruined this kid's life. Because every time he gets called a hero or something like that, he doesn't seem like he wants that, you know. And, it, it's and like, obviously the boys yeah. this week were like, oh, hey, you know don't talk about when he was drugged one time he's like i'm the hero or whatnot like i get when he was drugged saying that but no ahead. like i was gonna say when he comes back and before dexter approaches him with like the uh the straight blade razor he seemed pretty fucking jazzed at like what happened at the school he's like man i had an awesome day yeah, at school today fair. and like that's when they would have been doing the chance and everything right harrison harrison <laughs> just like i don't know I, I i felt like he was pretty positive from that and i feel like yeah, it's it's one thing to be looked at as a hero for stopping, you know, a tragic event that could have been. Uh, but it, it's also like he still attacked Ethan. And I mm. I think I don't think it's it's uh, unfair to say that Dexter's theory is pretty damn, pretty damn good. You know, he's he's a great uh, crime scene investigator. So I oh, think yeah. the image that he portrayed is what actually happened. And that's got to be touched upon going forward more so than it has been. So I, I'm very excited for that. And uh, and yeah, just, just, just the whole thing with Harrison's behavior at the party, whether it was talking to Audrey or just, just him going off the rails. I want to know how much the Ethan situation is playing in on that. Yeah. Um, because, because I, I mean, I'm on the other camp of being like, no, he's fucked up. He, <laughs> there's some fucked up things in his head that, that that's making him go this route. And I know that you're, you're on the other side. I'm just not buying into it because of like his just behavior of coming home. Like, fuck dude, I was, I'm the hero of this town now. It's awesome. And then okay. I'll, I'll give you the party one. I, I, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not calling him a hero or sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm not saying he's, uh, think he needs the hero because of what he said at the party just just oh, from no, what no, happened no. earlier yeah yeah well i got a question for you after this last ad break and we're back so my question then is so if he's just like a fucked up character and he's just like already messed up he has a dark pasture and if this is like a let's say hopefully there's no spinoffs but no spinoffs just a one season I feel like that's just, like, such a tragic ending for everyone overall. I know someone might say, like, oh, hey, that's the point. But, like, at the end of the day, and I'll say this just because it's my favorite show, in Breaking Bad, it's like, Jesse still got away and hopefully he's having a happy life. You know, like, Walt's kids still got away. They have, like, a not as great life, but then they're going to get some money, go watch the finale, stuff like that. I just feel like Harrison has to be the silver lining of, like, Harry, Deborah, Dexter, 
jokes like where like something good has to come from all like something has to be everlasting like okay like he could have been dark but like he made it out and he's not one of us and he's gonna go live his life and like do like and maybe fuck at the end of the season dexter will be dead or incarcerated and harrison's gonna be living with audrey and angela and stuff like that like that's what i want and i feel like if he has a dark passenger you do two things one if it's just ended it's not happy because like oh this kid's fucked up and he's gonna have a dark life like dexter or two then it's like well we're doing a spinoff with harrison and i don't i don't want i want this to be the end and i really do maybe Even Kurt adopts him <laughs> oh fuck hey come over here son look at this video you know but like yeah i just like what do you think kirkland then if he is having this dark pasture what is the ending for harrison um yeah because if it goes a similar route of him just being dark like you can't get a, a happy ending out I, I i liked what you were saying how like harrison like he's the last ring in the ladder of like just just being something positive that came out of all of the bad shit that went on throughout the the story of Dexter, mm -hmm. and uh, I, I I think it would be it, it would be good if he made it alive. It's just like I, I I'm not against you on that on what you're pitching there. I I just I'm not buying it yet for what's been yeah. portrayed on the show. But for what I would what I want with the character to end, um, that's what I mean. He's dark passion. Yeah. Like you say, then where does he end up? You know, either they, I, or does he just does he does he bite it at some point? Like, does he a, is he a thing that <laughs> makes yeah. Dexter go off the deep end? You know, like. <laughs> yeah, I don't think he's gonna die. I think he's gonna make it out of the show. Um, maybe I'll just say this: I hope what you're pitching is correct. I, I think that's the better way to do the story. It's just I'm not buying it so far for what they're showing in the show. Um, mm -hmm. But so you know, we got we're halfway through. We we got oh yeah, we got exactly the amount that we've seen left in the show. So a lot can happen in that time. A lot happened. A lot has happened already. Yeah. Um, Look at this so, episode. Yeah. How much happened in one episode? So much happened. So, yeah. yeah. Harrison could die next week. It might be over for him. Hurt my fucking <laughs> Could you imagine? <laughs> yeah. Uh, what about you, Tia? Because I know you were more in that <laughs> camp too last week of having a dark or dark pasture. Where do you think by the end of the season Harrison is then? Oh uh, yeah, that's tough. I I I do think there's two ways they can go about this. I think there's the way that they could go where they want to continue Harrison as a character. They want to yeah. Of Give course. him a new show, spin off, make more money. And, you know, money speaks. So that's probably, today's the day. That's his uh, new like motto. Yeah. <laughs> that's probably the higher up on the tier of what's likely to happen. But the thing I think that, at least oh. for me personally, what I would love to happen is he doesn't become like Dexter. He doesn't get that dark passenger. He, he tries to like go down like a better path, but he learns what his dad was and he tries to rectify that. And that's it. It closes out and that's the end of Dexter's chapter. And it's like, it started with Dexter and it dies with Dexter. That's it. I think that would be a great closeout, but I don't know if they will because money speaks. Well, yeah, and then you have the idea of Dexter being like, I, "My life is complete proof of like, don't do this." Like, I like you're like I didn't even mention Rita, like his mother. It's like it would have been so much better off if Dexter had gotten killed and Rita was the one alive for Harrison. You know, like it would have been like his life would be it'd be shitty, but like still, it's just. I feel like with all his history, it's like whatever you have to do if you do have these urges, you just have to push away because it's not going to get you anywhere good. And but yeah, a show of Harrison, like, and if they do that, does Michael C. Hall play the role of Jennifer Carpenter Harry? I feel like they'd have to do that, right? Because mm. I feel like this actor and this character alone wouldn't sell the show. But if he were to come back and like, oh, Michael C. Hall's playing the devil on the shoulder sort of deal, it's like, oh, people would tune in then because it's like, look, it's so. Oh yeah, show, I'm always worried about Showtime. This show's doing great numbers, so um. Oh, there's two things I was going to... Oh, yeah, the two things I was going to ask you, because we I forgot to bring this up last week, that the first time we've actually seen Harry was last week. It was just from the old show. It was the scene, but we'd saw him. Do you think we ever have Harry talk to Dexter in this season? Because obviously that was huge I've, in the first show, right? But he's I not think, been around once. I'd say yes. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I think it'll be, like, like really like really small, though. Like it'll, it'll just be, like, one moment where Dexter's, I don't know, maybe realizing something big happening or something along the lines and then harry approaches him just for one touching scene and just to i don't know just just to try and tear the heartstrings of some serial killer <laughs> well i feel like if dexter does die like if he sees a bunch of people that would be like one of the final people he sees or if he does like something really good for his son and i'm pitching this too because i just they had so few scenes i very much would love if dexter had a scene with ghost deb and ghost harry because that that the Deborah Harry dynamic we didn't really see much in the original show because 
it wasn't about that, right? So even if they're ghosts, that'd be the thing. So, uh, what about you, Kirk or Taylor? Do you think we're gonna see Harry at any point? Yeah, Kirk, tell me again. What do you think? <laughs> oh, I mean, I can't say no. I think there's definitely a chance, but I, I think it's relatively unlikely. So, do you think it's relatively unlikely that we see Batista again? I think it's probably like eighty-five percent that we see. Ooh, him. I, like I think it's a high chance. Kirk, what about you? Do you think we see Angel again? What was? What did you say? What do you An- call? Angel. 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 Yeah. An- that's Angel. Uh, Angel. Um, yeah. I think I'd be upset if I didn't see him again. Um, just. I don't know, like in that moment when he like hinted that he's not gonna remember Harrison's name, I'm like, come on, come on, yeah, fuck off with this cock tease. And then he turned around and said it again. It's like, oh, okay, yeah, here we go. We're we're crossing streams with the old show and the new show. So, um, like I I want him to be back, but at the same time, like just logistically, like why would he unless yeah. unless um. My Angela hope was she was goes gonna be like, oh, and can back. You come help with this case, and he was yeah, or, come down there, or just like like sh- like send a photo of what she found. Like, can you confirm this is the person? And just yeah. like a little bit more interaction with her, like like her, her being the bridge between the characters. Maybe even like she brings them to Iron Lake, and then could you imagine <laughs> like just that face off between Angel? Oh yeah, and uh, uh, Dexter. Oh yeah, I'm sixty percent because I feel like yeah, it could be a close off for the character, and he just like goes back to his life, but. I guess I just really want it because I just because like there's Masuka and there's Quinn, there's some other characters, but Angel is the closest to uh, Dexter. I just feel like he can be that, you know, like what was fucking wrong with you? And I, I and here's the kind of this is why I want him to get arrested because I want Dexter to finally go out and be like, and you know what? James Stokes was not the Bay Harbor Butcher. I was the Bay Harbor Butcher. Like to give his family some fucking rest because uh, you guys don't remember this, but in season two, the finale, it's Stokes's funeral. Early in the episode, the where was handing out flyers to everyone, like Dose's funeral, and everyone's like, we're not fucking going this because, like, he's, a, you know, what he was, right? So when they go to the funeral, it's Aguerta, it's uh, Dokes' mom, his two sisters, and in the very back, it's Dexter. And it's super sad that this guy, who was just a cop, a good guy, trying to do, like, no one was there, and he's just considered for the past 10 years to be this vicious serial killer. And I would actually like him to, because also, if you guys don't remember, and he was going to frame Dokes, but in season two of Dexter, his plan was not to kill Dokes. Lila did that. His plan was to keep Dokes alive and frame him and just be in, be in prison. Mm-hmm. So he was always a little regretful that, like, Lila did that. So that's why I would love if, like, him, like I said, in my opinion, if there's proof that he is the Bay Harbor Butcher, you would expedite that guy back to Miami. Like, that would be the case there. That That's the full reason for him to go back there. And I feel like that would be the full circle of the show of him ending up in a prison in Miami. Like, it's warm, whether he's getting a death sentence, whatever it may be. And like I said, I do kind of want him to, like, give Dokes his name back. This poor guy. <laughs> like, he's yeah. not the Bay Harbor Butcher, you, you know? You know that Batista is going to come, come up in the next episode. Not like he may not appear, but at least the name drop. I think Angela's going to be like, hey, I talked yeah. to this guy named Batista. He says he knows you. What's going on? Yeah. So. Oh, that scene. That scene would be so good if they see each other again. Oh, I would just love it. But yeah, we'll have to see. Oh, go ahead. I was just going to say, like, a couple times in this episode, we see Dexter on the back heel, and like Taylor mentioned, like, he was able to just improvise, adapt, overcome in those moments, like, whether it's tossing the syringe. I can't believe he cleaned up the entire, like, kill room before the SWAT got up there, but quick. nonetheless, yeah, and, like, moved the guy, put his clothes back on, like, like just all these things that he did really quick. All but... he put down was his shoes first, I'm like, what, is he just going to have him naked with his shoes on? <laughs> yeah, I, know, I was confused. <laughs> I'm like, how is he going to sell this scene? <laughs> but, um... Yeah, he just <laughs> like the, the shoes tied around his neck like oh he hung himself with his shoes and logan's like that didn't happen this is yeah. um <laughs> so yeah like like i just noticed like a couple times of him being on his back foot but he, but he, being able to manage it oh no travis going He's laughing about his shoes thing. I just laugh and I love that's how low Dexter's on the tier. He thinks this is the f- way to frame. Like <laughs> I'm gonna tie these shoes around his neck and make it look like he, he killed himself with the shoes. And then, oh, good. He's like, I still got it. <laughs> yeah, fuck yeah. And on the news, it's like foul play suspected in drug dealers. Like, Damn it. <laughs> oh, but uh, okay. So yeah, just seeing him on his back foot, you know, tr- and then yes. being able to like slightly get away with it mm-hmm. in these moments but if he's face to face with angel like what kind of lie can, can he come up with? it's like no dexter has a, a twin 
He's got a like like what can he say in those moments? Like he's literally caught red handed. Now I'm not saying Angel's gonna immediately be like, You're the Bayer Harbor butcher, you're the one, but it's just it's just going to be a very interesting dynamic Wh- whether or not it's him and, and angel interacting but just let alone angela like this person that supposedly you know like they said i love you multiple times together like they have a close bond yeah. and she already was like you have a son like what is this you never told me this and then now it's just being more and more revealed this way and it's already been proven that she's a good cop so i'm excited for just next episode oh there wouldn't be any situation yet where Batista would be like, oh, De- like if he sees Dexter in the same room, Batista's not going to be like, hey, you're the Bay Arbor Butcher. Like, holy shit. Because no, again, no. he reiterated this episode like, hey, it was someone else, all that jazz. So I think you have this <laughs> thing kind of unfold where Batista would be like, Dexter, oh my God, like, like you died. And Dexter could play it off, be like, get the fuck away from me. Like, just totally freak <laughs> out at him. Like, Whoa, <laughs> I don't know if he's going to go that Angel's around. just stripping. <laughs> Dexter and Kurt are freaking out. (laughs) No, I thought he would try to do like the Harrison route episode one when he's like, oh, like you got the wrong guy. Like I think he, but I feel like he almost couldn't ignore him because like Harrison, you can do that because he's a little kid. I feel like Dexter would just have to just drop him. But that's why I still think there's the chance that I don't know how. Because again, Trinity's he's high on dick. Because again, high on erection. Again. (laughs) Trinity is going to play a role in this because they keep bringing it up. And that's the thing where I, I don't know how they're going to, but I just, I don't know. Again, maybe I'm just fantasy booking. There's a part of me that just thinks Dexter's going to get shot and he's going to die in Iron Lake and it'll be like very Logan esque, the film. But I just feel like there has to be something, some moment where they put together, like, even if they fucking arrest Jim Lindsay and they look at this room and it's plastic and it's like the Bay Harbor Butcher and Angel would know, hey, the same way that's how LaGuerta caught it, it was LaGuerta in season seven found a blood slide at a crime scene and she went to the team like, do we do this? Like, oh, no, we don't do this. And she started put two and two together like, well, there's plastic there, the blood slide, the butcher's still around. Same thing of Angel. If he were to see that, he'd be like, okay, this feels very similar. Or like if he'd see photos of it and I hope we get that. And that's I think he'd I think. implode. I think he'd just like panic like, holy shit, 10 years later, the Bay Harbor Butcher is still at large. Like that would break someone. Oh yeah. And it's, and Jim Lindsay's the guy. Yeah. Uh, yeah, well, we did it. Uh, that was a fun one. I think the next few weeks we got conversations with Harris. We got conversations with Angela. We got a Trinity appearance still to come. We got this Kurt thing going on. We still got to find what's going on with the billionaire. Maybe Batista comes back. Like there's lots on the board and the table right now for a really good. And I'll also like, I'm pre- like, this is for me, this matches what seasons one to four was. Also, we're going to have to see if it has like the LOL ending and stuff like that. But like, I think the quality it feels very much like Dexter of old. And that's the good thing of like, it's to me, they're going to have to have a pretty shit finale of like, even stuff like Harrison, he has a dark pasture. I'm not the biggest fan of it, but how they're writing and doing it. I'm like, okay, I'm liking this. So I'm just happy that we're already halfway through the season. I feel like we got like another, like another great season of Dexter, you know, like it hasn't been like, Oh, it's all right. It has some good stuff, bad stuff. It's felt like it's been on par with what we got back then. And that's the best part, you know? It is funny, uh, as I earlier mentioned, like I was this is the first episode Shay's seen, I think, mm-hmm. of all of Dexter, like of anything. <laughs> so she was asking a lot of questions with just like characters, like whether it's Angel or just how like it left off from because you know, there's there's just like she was asking about Deb and things like yeah. this. And I'm just like explaining her <laughs> like the fate of these characters and how I'm like, yeah, you know, their adopted sister at one point, she's just like declaring love for him and like becoming obsessed with him. And I'm like, yeah, we don't really talk about those last seasons. I couldn't even get through the last, <laughs> the last season. And it's just, it, it's funny how into this season I am. And it honestly makes me just forget of how much of a slog those last few episodes yeah. were to watch. I didn't even, I've already mentioned it. Like I, I couldn't make it through the last season but even before that it was just like man this show is it's like a chore it's like okay i got homework and my homework is to watch dexter because i'm just committed at this point i'm six seasons in gotta keep going but uh no it's great i'm loving it they're they're doing a great job and i think that's it 
Oh yeah, no. Oh yeah, I was I was because sh- I for people that don't know, I dropped out, so I wasn't sure if you guys like ended the episode while I was out. So it's like, oh fuck, what happened? Oh, no, man. all I was gonna say is like I said, my experiment that I'm gonna do the next time I rewatch the show, I want to see if I can watch one to four and then just skip the others and watch five and see what that would play like because I feel like there is a way that you can kind of play it as far as like. Like I said, Rita died, and obviously there's stuff like Hannah you wouldn't know, and like where to die. But it's like the way they do it, I feel it feels very book like. Where this season we show so far feels like it is a a book that is its own show. Like the way they even reveal, like oh he might not be Jim, and then they look in obituary. Like they treat it as almost sometimes you've never seen the show. There's like you said details that you don't know if you haven't seen it. But I like that it feels it, it's a continuation, but it does feel very on to itself. So. Well, yeah, we'll be back next week, episode six, and, uh, you know, do we get Trinity next week? I feel like no. I feel like we're going to wait a little bit longer now, because I feel like the Dexter Angela thing is going to be the, the bee's knees next week. I'm going to say yes. I think you they're think just going to fucking dump it all together in a crumb. No, we're not week. seeing him right away. We're going to get some more that? Kurt stuff, some more Angela stuff, and some more Harrison stuff. Angela's like, I found another person that knows you, and John Lithgow walks in, and he's still alive. It's like, oh, shit. <laughs> 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 that's how it ends oh shit did and then like next episode it's like what the fuck's <laughs> going on uh, it's her, the la the last half of the of the season goes the last half of like the show <laughs> and yeah. dexter it just goes the spiral oh and that's what i was gonna tell you the story of like uh because you never watched that last episode kirkland he when deborah dies he sneaks in the hospital and steals her body and brings on oh his wow brings on his boat so he can it's bury impressive. her at sea but yeah he, there because there was a tornado coming so that's why the i've yeah. Hospital I've seen the last and... shot of him like boating off into the 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 tornado. I didn't I didn't see him have Deb with him or anything like that. No, he but... was actually Deb still alive. Before. She yeah. wasn't actually dead. He <laughs> just threw her just alive. Just moving. Yeah. Let me the right, fuck out right of here. Right he tossed her in the water. <laughs> no, he tossed her in the water, then drove into the tornado, but then swam back to shore to f- become Jim Lindsay. So fucking there you go. Christ. Yeah. yeah. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that's the best place to end as we can. So until next week, we promise you it'll not be boring. Bye bye. Peace.